on news here locally and also weather. That is a very big story this afternoon here in Metro Detroit. First at four starts now. Local four news starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. Breaking news is the sentencing in a case that sparked a worldwide movement. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will spend 22 and a half years in prison for the murder of George Floyd. Chauvin was convicted of second degree and third degree murder as well as manslaughter. Moments ago, he was only sentenced on the most serious charge of second degree murder shortly, shortly after addressing the Floyd family directly. Minnesota sentencing guidelines called for 12 and a half years in prison. The judge was allowed to sentence him to more because of aggravating factors, including that Chauvin abused his authority as a police officer. You're looking at video right there of George Floyd's daughter talking about how much she loved him and misses him. The crime committed in front of children. Before the judge announced his decision, Floyd's daughter and brother gave statements in court. My family and I have been given a life sentence. We would never be able to get George back. Daddy's our daughter's first love. He would never be able to walk Gianna down the aisle at her wedding, attend those magical moments of her life like a daddy-daughter dance. If you could say anything to your daddy right now, what would it be? It would be, I miss you and I love you. Now, on the other side, you're looking there. That is Chauvin's mother. She came forward. She defended her son and gave the judge reason she thought the sentence should not be too harsh. Then the former officer himself briefly addressed the court. Due to some additional legal matters at hand, I'm not able to give a full formal statement at this time. Um, but very briefly, though, I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Floyd family. It has been difficult for me to hear and read what the media, public, and prosecution team believe Derek to be an aggressive, heartless, and uncaring person. I can tell you that is far from the truth. Derek Chauvin is still facing a federal civil rights trial. Again, he's been sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison. Right now, we are gathering reaction from local community leaders to the landmark sentencing. We'll have that part of the story when you join us tonight at 5. Plus, as we said, we are streaming new reaction to the sentencing as it happens. You can find continuing coverage at clickondetroit.com. All right, let's take a quick look at the first forecast. Many of us already dodging raindrops throughout the day. Andrew Humphrey tracking the potential for some storms. This is just the beginning, Andrew. That's right. When you're talking about the entire weekend, this is just the taste of what's in store as we go through Saturday, Sunday, and even in the next week. Now, rain continues to fall. Fortunately, it is not as widespread as what it has been earlier in the day. Nonetheless, we're still seeing some at least some light rain here in Wayne County and right here in the city of Detroit, getting a bit of a break right now. And we're seeing the rain become a little more scattered, but you still have those pockets of heavier showers you can see here in yellow and red in the western side of Wayne County. You can see also some heavier rain in the darker areas of green up toward Lapeer and parts of Oakland County, farther down to our south, a little more scattered in Monroe County, but Tecumseh, Adrian, you're seeing light to moderate showers at the moment. Many areas have already received a tenth of an inch of rain, but close to a half inch in many spots, especially in these areas of green here in uh, Macomb County. Well, the rain does continue as we go through the rest of this evening. We'll see temperatures remain in the low 70s with all the cloud cover, but any pop of sunshine will make it feel a bit warmer. We'll talk about the chance of showers with thunderstorms for tonight, and again, that weekend forecast coming right up. All right, now to this other big, big story. You can't talk about the condo collapse in Surfside, Florida without really thinking about all those people, probably most sound asleep, when that building came crashing to the ground. We do have new video of the scene as rescue efforts continue today. It has now been more than 38 hours since the collapse. Three more bodies have been discovered, bringing the official death toll to four people, but 159 people still missing right now, which leaves dozens of families and their friends in agony. Kimberly Gill following this very closely in the newsroom for us. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. It's been a devastating two days for the many families who know people who lived in the 12 story building north of Miami Beach. It's also been a dangerous two days for first responders as well, tasked with searching through the wreckage for survivors. This uh, is backbreaking and painstaking work as rescue crews use both heavy machines and their own hands 
to comb through all this uh, shifting heap of concrete and metal and all of that debris. The weather is also making the search more difficult with gusty winds and occasional rain showers hampering the efforts. Surfside's mayor says crews are doing everything they possibly can to help any survivors that might still be trapped. Among those who escaped, 11 people are injured with four taken to local hospitals. Many loved ones are gathered at a nearby reunification area, waiting, worrying and trying to console each other. Her bedroom, the master bedroom where she sleeps in, is right where the whole part collapsed. So we're hoping that she is in one of the hospitals. We just don't know um, when we're going to hear from them. It's incredibly moving to be on site with these uh, safety uh, personnel, fire rescue. They are totally, totally motivated. And, and once again, Karen, this is a very dangerous operation. We are monitoring the situation and we'll bring you updates as we learn more. We'll also have an update when you join us for Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Now, while much of Michigan is moving on to a new kind of normal during the COVID-19 pandemic, schools could still face some safety precautions in the fall. And we're talking about face masks. The state cites the risk to children under 12 who cannot receive the vaccine right now. So as a result, it is recommending schools use well fitted face masks during in person learning, also urging social distancing, COVID testing and continued contact tracing. We're going to have a closer look at the recommendations We're gathering reaction for you at five today. The state meantime reporting just 40 new cases of COVID. Now that is the smallest single day number since March 17th of 2020. But be warned, the state is also reporting 15 additional deaths, so the threat of the virus clearly not over. UAW's first black president is stepping down. Rory Gamble announced today he is retiring at the end of the month, a year earlier than planned. Gamble became the union's president in June of 2018. Now, during his tenure, Gamble guided the union through the aftermath of the ongoing corruption scandal and the pandemic. Gamble's retirement, effective June 30th. Under the union's constitution, the board will elect a successor to serve the remainder of the term. Well, there has been a lot of big news this week, so you may have missed an important push to protect the environment. In this case, the focus is on saving those hardworking honeybees who help to fuel our food supply. In this birds, bees, and butterflies story, Paula Tubman explains it's never too late to take a pollinator pledge. Lots of activities this week to draw our attention to helping Mother Nature so she can continue to help us. This is awesome. Yeah, beautiful. You're never too young to save the planet, and you're never too old either. What you're looking at is literally a grassroots effort to mitigate flooding the city of Detroit can be so famous for with a drain garden or plants that naturally handle rain runoff instead of man-made engineering. This is a blue lobelia. We've also got some ironwood and some purple coneflower up around the edges. So these species were selected um, for a sort of a, a transect of how much moisture they like in the soil. And then we've also got pollinator friendly species here since we are celebrating uh, National Pollinator Week. So that's the idea is the, the trench and then the species that are planted help mitigate the fast flow of that storm water into the river system uh, and it can prevent flooding. <sighs> These dedicated citizens of the globe have taken a critical pledge that protects the food supply for all of us. The Pollinators Pledge. Numerous organizations, including the Motor City's National Heritage Area, met at Fort Street Bridge Park to pollinate and learn to pollinate. It was an opportunity to celebrate those who have taken the pledge to do something, whatever they can do, in their communities, at their homes, and their, with their companies and organizations to help support uh, pollinator habitats in our region. And what's the pollinator's pledge, you ask? To create landscapes that will sustain uh, these valuable partners of ours, the bees, the butterflies, that need these landscapes in order to make their journeys wherever they're going. So the impact of the event is to show that humans really do have impact when they work with Mother Nature instead of working against her. I haven't started planting yet this year, but I have a lot of pots that I wanted to do container gardening in. So this will be a perfect start for that. And at least now I have labels of what the plants are. And I'm, I have seen some butterflies already, so I must have something in the yard that's attracting them. 
And of course, when you take the Pollinators Protection Pledge, it's, oh, that's pretty. it's really a pledge to learn your role in the larger environment. Actually, the finished product of what it looks like when it blooms is very pretty. Which Marilyn happily takes the position of student. I wanted to know a little bit more about the different types of plants that attract the bees and the butterflies because I am a fan of butterflies as well. Translation, it's never too late to hop on the bee train. Paula Tutman, Local 4. You can learn more about the Pollinators Pledge and how to plant pollination gardens by going to clickondetroit.com where we have posted a link right on the home page. Still ahead, here first at four, can you really believe the product reviews you see online? We're going to talk about a new investigation focusing on two tech giants. Up first, America's Attorney General takes action. One state stands accused of trying to stop African Americans from voting, but its governor is blasting the move. And before we go to break, we want to invite you to a night of summer fun on Monday. Watch Live in the D's Summer Spectacular and learn about the new hot spots in Metro Detroit. Then it's time for the fabulous Ford Fireworks. It's all on Local 4, Monday at 8 and 9. We'll be right back, everybody.